So what I'm going to very quickly do is um, tell you a bit about the wonderful creative work that we've been doing in addition to setting up the Research Institute and getting together this team of wonderful leaders. We've also decided that we need to have a, um, <clears throat> a, th a theoretical framework or a way of bringing our understanding about self-care and care together because we really do want to break the, the mould. We want to change the way we think and do caring. Now, as a nurse, uh, I have spent my whole life thinking, doing, talking about caring. And I have to say, it still really depresses me that we still don't get it right. We still don't get the basics right. So part of the reason for establishing the Caring Futures Institute was really to bring together the best minds, the best practitioners to really come together to try and solve these real world wicked problems. Uh, we're Im immersed in strong principles around co-design, collaboration and impact. So as I said, we just don't talk about it. We want to demonstrate the impact of it. We're a bunch of interdisciplinary researchers, clinicians, workers, and it's an absolute joy to, have, to be working with health economists, physiotherapists, nurses, psychologists, all sorts of ologists uh, I'm surrounded by. We're practical, and I'm not going to say it's because we're women, and mostly women, but maybe there's something there. And, and absolutely because uh, it's uh, led by women, is that we're demonstrating excellence and innovation in scientific research and the ability to apply knowledge into practice. So the Caring Life Course Theory, uh, as I said, we have been working, all the people whose uh, images you've seen on the front page, plus a couple of others, have been working since February of this year to try and understand how we uh, generate a conceptual framework or theoretical understanding of care. Now, the foundations of this come from work that I have been um, involved in over this last 10, 15 years around the fundamentals of care. And we um, have been working at, in trying to understand why it is that uh, some of basic care, the things that people call basic essential care or activities of daily living, those are the things that we often tend to um, have overlooked when we get into health systems or other types of care systems. So again, whilst, whilst it may seem um, self-evident or not really requiring any sort of um, theoretical or systematic study, the fact that we're not doing it, the fact we're not doing it consistently means that we have to come back and look at the value base of caring of fundamental care, the way we talk about it, the language we use, the metaphors, the images, how we do it, um, how we generate an evidence base to how we do it, and how we own it, how we stand morally, ethically, with accountability if we are in any sort of caring uh, relationship. Now, um, those of you uh, in the health system will know that uh, one of the, the most significant um, shapers or theories about how we understand uh, needs, how we understand care, is from Abraham Maslow's uh, theory that was generated in the 50s. And you can see the physiological um, <clears throat> needs of water, food, shelter, sleep. These are the sorts of things that, again, we would call fundamental care needs. If they are not met consistently, systematically, then you cannot uh, achieve the safety, love, esteem, and self-actualization. Uh, our work around the fundamentals of care uh, showed that within um, nursing, within healthcare delivery, uh, within uh, discourses around care, whether it's looking at care needs, whether it's looking at um, dependency, independence, interdependence, we know that there are three core elements that are absolutely essential. Relationship, 
integration of the physical, psychosocial, and um, relational, and the context of care. So it was these, uh, th this sort of um, framework that became the building blocks for the Caring Life Course Theory. And the Caring Life Course Theory, um, as it, it sort of indicates, is uh, the argument is that just as we have learnt that uh, um, social determinants are um, chronic disease, um, the, the way that an individual will track through uh, acquiring chronic disease, how they live, those things just don't happen when you hit 40 or hit 60. They actually start when you're born and the, the experience that you have in infancy, in childhood, in adolescence, in adulthood will determine what will happen to you as you grow older. Now, interestingly, um, nobody has ever until now in our Caring Futures Institute actually looked at caring through a life course lens, which is really, really interesting because if you look at it, you know, none of us would be here if we hadn't had someone care for us, usually a parent, a mother. Uh, none of us uh, would, would be able to actually have an independent life or have a life that we felt was valuable if we had not learnt how to self-care and had we not negotiated um, the, the support that other people needed to give us during the times that we couldn't care for ourselves. So whilst uh, when you present it, it's pretty self-evident, it actually took us a long time to work out um, care need, that the care that comes from others and the care that you give to yourself. And I think the important thing here is that you need to, this diagram is from the perspective of the individual who has the care need. Now often as professionals, we um, use the other lens, which is we are looking at the person and making decisions about the care they need rather than trying to understand it from the person's perspective. Now again, um, so you can then start playing around with this sort of um, uh, this model because you can see that uh, just as we are all different, so our self-care ability and our n need for care from others will change depending on uh, our life, how we were born, the sort of uh, challenges, accidents, whatever. So, and again, uh, it takes, um, by looking at this, it takes uh, the value judgment out of uh, care and people's need for care because all we're saying that part of the human condition is that you need care and part of societal responsibility is that we decide or enable you to get the care you need to live a good life. Now you can see that in this diagram um, if, you, if you're working on the assumption that self-care and need care from others are the um, coordinates that determine the equation about how you optimize a person's experience, then you can also say that sometimes you don't get enough or you don't know how to self-care enough or uh, you don't get enough care from other people. So that then means that we can start to hypothesize and predict and understand and negotiate how care needs to be sorted. And the final uh, commentary on the Caring Life Course theory. As we know, the majority of care happens in families with people. We, the professionals, are just like the tip of the iceberg. And yet, you know, how come we are the determinators of so many other people's experiences? We need to turn this on, our, on its head, and that's what we're doing in the, care, in the Caring Futures Institute. So what will make us stand out and be successful? Well, clear and consistent narrative with a strong theoretical base, and this is what we're doing. We're going to be using the Caring Life Course Theory to shape the use and testing of other theories right across the life course, across multiple disciplines. We're going to be at taking a focused and themed approach and building on a coherent research vision that will target areas of neglect, and let me tell you, there are a lot of those, 
but we will be working to solve problems around unmet need and going to the places where maybe there's not the uh, resource at the minute, but there is need and there are people who are vulnerable, who do not have a voice, and these are the people that we want to reach. So we'll do that by um, creating our continuing to create an exciting, vibrant culture of inquiry and innovation, and we'll do it together. So what's our 10-year research plan? Well, we're going to set up base camp at Flinders Village with our living laboratories, our student-led clinics, our care hotels, our care tells, that will be uh, a place for intergenerational and inter uh, professional discourse and community. Uh, we will be generating evidence to inform quality of care across the lifespan, and we'll be looking at care in the first 2,000 days as well as care in the last 2,000 days and working with our colleagues from uh, REPAD or Research into Palliative Care, Death and Dying Centre for that. Uh, we'll be looking at care across transitions, fatherhood, motherhood, retirement, living well, and we'll be managing care trajectories, um, people with chronic diseases. How do we follow up and manage and optimize people's self-care capability and their need for care for others? And how do we teach it? How do we care for others? So just leaving you with uh, the vision of the future, we're bold, we're, we're, I was gonna say we're brash, but we're not brash, we're brilliant. Uh, we have a great uh, uh, vision for the future, and we want you to be part of that. We need your voice, so whoever is listening, get on the email. Tell us that you want to be part of this wonderful uh, vision. So, are we beyond caring? Well, actually, no. I think this is the beginning of a wonderful transformation of our caring industries, of our communities and that will make us stronger, more collaboratively generating evidence for better practice. Thank you so much.